Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannon's Insurance, where you can sign up for the Shannon's Club and Penrite Oil, offering technical assistance seven days a week. Hello and welcome to another sensational episode of Classic Restos. Thanks to the continued support from Shannon's Insurance and Penrite Oil. It stands without doubt that Shannon's Insurance offer us as the enthusiast just so much more. Why not pick up the phone and give Shannon's a call for a quote on 134646. The company is amazing. They have promotions, giveaways and you can sign up to become a member of the Shannon's Club. There's just so much more awaiting you at shannons.com.au and of course the Shannon's Club where it really is your garage. And when it comes time for the finest in oils, coolants, additives and just so much more, you cannot go past Penrite. Nice gold engine bay here and the liquid gold you should be using is Penrod oil. There's more zinc content in the oil for our older cars and again just so much more. penrite has been around since 1926 they've stood the test of time on top of that Australian made and Australian owned which is getting harder to find these days. The Penrite technical assistance team is also there to help us seven days a week. Find out more when you visit Penrite online at penriteoil.com.au. Oil right, use Penrite simply a better class of oil. And on today's show, I have a feeling of deja vu as I return here to Silverwater Park on the banks of the Parramatta River, just west of Sydney, New South Wales. Now, just two weeks ago, I was here to showcase Small Cars on the Green, where some magnificent Japanese classic cars turned up. Well, it's a return, and today it's about Dinky Dye Aussie Iron, as we celebrate the 51st anniversary of the mighty E.H. Holden. Yes, it's hard to imagine. We are 51 years on, and so too is one of Australia's top-selling cars in history, the E.H. Holden. What a simplistic design, a trusty car. Drawing comparisons, if your next-door neighbour was an E.H. Holden, he'd be a nice, honest bloke. The E.H. Holden was released in August 1963, running through until 1965. With the acquisition of the red engine, the E.H. model was the first Holden to incorporate seven main bearings instead of four from the grey engine that retired in the model E.J. Holden. The E.H. gave you two engine size choices, a standard 2.4 litre 149 cubic inch or the optional 2.9 litre 179 cubic inch engine. These engines came with a three-speed manual or high dramatic three-speed automatic transmission. A total of almost 257,000 E.H. Holdens were produced and sold around Australia, with over 10,500 of those being shipped to 55 overseas export markets. To think that over a quarter of a million E.H. Holdens sold in just 18 months and looking at one, it's easy to see why. The EH featured a new look roofline and clean styling. Its lines were straight, giving the EH a longer, lower look, as opposed to past models. And driver and passenger visibility was also very good. In my opinion, the EH Holden looked good at any angle, and possibly one of the nicest Holdens ever made. This is what it's all about. The 51st anniversary of the sensational and mighty EH Holden. How are you, Mick? Very well, thank you, Fletch. That's the way, mate. Beautiful car. Now, this is where it begins. We've got our relatively base model car, three-speed manual on the tree, the trusty 149 up front. Tell us about the car. Yep, drum brakes. Uh, this is a, a 1963 uh, Holden Special. And yeah, 149, the small engine of the two, uh, three-speed crash gearbox, so no sinker on first. Old school. Tell us where the EH goes back with you in your life, Mick. My first car was an EH uh, on my P-plates. My next-door neighbour had one. We both used to work at the local service station. The owner there had a, an EH uh, Appendix J, as it was called then at the time, race car, and we were all sort of in love with Holdens, and uh, it was purchased from a guy around the corner for $150, and, uh, and I spent year 12 driving to and from school with five friends in the car. So we move through time. You're at the stage of your life, you are now, and you decide to get your first car back. How special is that? It, it, it's really important. 
You'd be surprised how many people, they have their little midlife crisis and they go back to their first car. It has all these fond memories for them and the, and the trips and the adventures and the life. So, yeah, I've done that. Where did you get the car from? I was actually advertised on car sales and it was up in Cairns at Atherton, just out of Cairns. So the ad was the ad was fairly straightforward. It was, this is the car and if you want it, I'm in Cairns. So uh, be prepared to travel. So we, we, we made a bit of a weekend of it. Did you drive it back? Absolutely, yep. How'd you go on the trip back all right? Yeah, loved it. I had a grin on my face and my, my cheeks were hurting by the time I got back to Sydney. What a beautiful car they are to drive. Yeah. And they are fantastic. Look, just slow and just cruisy and everyone loves it. The kids wave at you. Everyone's got an EH story. Everyone. Little 149 up front, EH Holden, 50, 55 mile an hour car all day long. That's what they were designed for. I mean, I love the uh, NASCO accessories too back in the day too. We've got the rear Venetian in the back there as well. Um, I mean, there's something about a Venetian blind, I think, in one of these old cars as well. It, it's just time. It, it's the right era for it, yeah. Mick, thank you so much for sharing this car with us. I know it means so much to you, and I uh, wouldn't be surprised if you're going to keep it for the rest of your life. I hope you do. Certainly the plan, Fletcher. may even pass it down to the, the kids. Good on you, mate. Thanks, Fletch. There's no better way than to start the 51st anniversary of the EH Holden with this guy here, Andy, with his 1968 XT Falcon. How are you, Andy? Yeah, not bad, buddy. That's all right. Mate, I had to pounce on you. I know this is the Holden show, but I have to give credit where credit is due here. This would have to go down as probably one of the nicest XT Falcons I've ever seen. Yeah, thanks for that. It's uh, just a six-banger, but I like it, and it does the job and gets to the shows. It's good. One nice thing, too, about the EH Car Club of New South Wales here on this particular day, although it's celebrating the 51st anniversary, everybody is welcome. And there are so many other makes here today, which is nice to see as well. Yeah, some lovely cars here. You look around and a beautiful day as well. It's good. Andy, you've turned up. You've started a bit of a precedent happening here. We've got the Skippy car next to us. You know, I wish that was the original Skippy car. It's pretty close. The original had a 6. It's running a 289. There's so much variance here today. But before we go any further, tell us quickly about your car here. Well, Fletch, I've had it about seven years, and uh, it's not a bad car. It was in good nick before. It's even better now. Little things along the way doing here and there and just brought it back to spec. And um, it drives nice. It's a nice car. Take the family out. Come to these beautiful day shows and... Yeah, it's a good thing. You've gone to a bit of uh, effort here today. You've um, you've got your your Lino replica it's sitting on there. You've got the uh, the original plaque of the car there, the the, the sales board. You've got an Esky, you've got the Coke going on. Made an old uh, an old tyre pump. You've gone all out, Andy. Yeah, keep with the era, and I like the old stuff. It's good, you know. They made them good back then, and yeah, yeah it's good. It's good to see as well that you've um, you've kept a six cylinder in the car as well. Yeah, I couldn't spoil it. I, I do have a V8 that I've thought about putting in, but mm. you can't beat that six. It's such a tidy engine, and yeah. and it's so tight to drive. It's really good. They're unbreakable too. There, uh, those Falcon sixes, they were really something, weren't they? Yeah, they were, and just the smells and all that. It brings you back to when you're a kid, you know. Yeah. Isn't that funny? You know, that's I'm glad you said that because the cars had that smell when they were new and 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 it sort of sticks with you yeah and you you help carry the shopping and then you you burn your bum when the sun's been on the vinyl all day and that sort of thing but it's good beautiful mate good on you andy thanks for turning up to a holden show today mate with uh, like i said to one of the nicest falcons i've seen in a long time good on you buddy yeah especially the holden day thank you yeah, no worries where would we be without shannon's insurance why not pick up the phone and give shannon's a call for a quote and to find out more information on 134646 you can also sign up and become a member of the Shannons Club, an opportunity to interact with fellow enthusiasts such as ourselves. See more when you visit shannons.com.au. And Penrite Oil, established in 1926, Australian made, Australian owned, and the Penrite Technical Assistance Team are there to help us seven days a week. Find out more when you visit Penrite at penriteoil.com.au. I hope you're really enjoying the 2014 51st anniversary of the mighty E.H. Holden. Back with more Holdens right after this. Moving through today's show where I think every E.H. Holden that's left in Australia is here at Silverwater Park. How are you, Greg? Good, thanks. How are you, Fletch? Good, mate. Good. Now, you've got a 64 Prem. Yep. Um, now, do we call it customised? Tell us what you've done. Partly customised. Tried to keep it as original as I could. Made a few modifications inside, but nothing, nothing structural. Yeah, just um, HR cross member with the disc brakes and a set of 78 dragways, but the rest of it's holding. How's it drive? 
Drive's beautiful, mate. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Yep. yep, just come down from Newcastle on the freeway. Good run down. Yeah. Yeah. Jeez, mate, tell you what, the engine bay looks pretty. Yeah, it was a lot of work, mate. I, it was a lot of work. I chose the, uh, the the gold, which makes the candy apple red, so I used the gold base for the engine bay and surrounded it with the candy apple part. So. Wow. What a different way to go. Well, Lo- I love the, uh, the, the the standard appeal there of the X2 air cleaner. How neat's that? Yeah, well, I, I didn't want to go um, I didn't want to go off Holden, and I, I didn't really want to go with a single Stromberg, and they uh, suggested I get the uh, twin Strombergs off the X2, and yeah. I, I was lucky to get the manifold, the yeah. Strombergs, and the air filter in one go, and, yeah, it worked out really well. Mate, that's beautiful. And talking a beautiful look inside, eh? Look at the cockpit area. Wow, the seats. Mate, what's going on there? Yeah, mate, uh, the guy that restored it knew a, a really good upholster in Avalon named Gary Penning, and he, he upholstered the car, and I'm more than happy with it. It was a very good job. Well done. Now, something that we don't really talk about much on the show is uh, trunk space or the boot area. Now, out the back in the boot there, you've... Um, tidied its act up as well there Greg. Yeah I had some, they used a special material, it wasn't timber, it was like a um, like an aluminium so it won't rust and had the carpet all done and the sides all done and then a, the actual boot's got a hinge where it can lift up the top and see the underneath of the boot area so yeah. definitely took my time and made the decisions and yeah. you know did it properly yeah Is the E8 your favourite model Holden? Yeah since I was 17 I just locked the old Holdens at a young age and I actually liked the EKs at first and I started swinging to the later model and I, yeah. I bought the car in 98. Yeah. I pulled it apart in 2001 and yeah. I started in 03 and yeah. finished in 2010. What a massive transition today. I mean, we look at brand new cars today from one to the other, there's not a lot of change. But going back then from an EK Holden from the high 50 styling and to this shape. They changed the whole structure, didn't they? Yeah. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Would have cost a lot more too, wouldn't it, you know? Absolutely. That's yeah. right. Uh, even the EJ, there's still some major changes with the, yeah. the rear quarter panels and the roofing and the, and, and the, the roof pillars, you know? So they, mm. they, they did make some major changes. Yeah, they they didn't did. they didn't just change the tail lights or the grills or do the small things. They made major changes, yeah. yeah and reflected in sales with the EH. I mean, you know, a quarter of a million hold and sold in 18 months. I mean, Good figures. It's pretty good. It is. It is. Yeah. Well, Greg, thanks for being on the show, mate. No worries, Fletch. Thank you very much, mate. That's all right. And, and thanks for driving down from Newcastle. Yeah, Newcastle, uh, yeah. Down here to Silverwater Park. Good yeah, on you. It's a great day. Thanks, Fletch. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Moving through as we do. Originality. Time capsules. We've got one here. How are you, Chris? Good, thanks, Fletch. How are you? Good, good, good. good. Well, what a remarkable story on this car. Yeah, Share it with absolutely. us. Absolutely. I, I bought it from Shannon's auction about four years ago, but... The history of it is an old lady lived um, lived somewhere down in one, a country town. <laughs> I don't remember which one right now. But, yeah, I've got the original books, original owner, original keys. Everything's original. I've just changed the um, the rocker cover gasket and side cover gaskets just about three weeks ago. Before we start talking about the engine, yeah. let's talk about these the books and this, oh, the, yeah, the, books, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. the owner's manuals. Yeah. You've also got a, a photo there of the original, the original owner and also, also all the sales receipts and every receipt that's ever had ever since new. Is she still alive? No. She died. She passed away about probably seven years ago. And bless her heart, you know, when you look at the photo and you go up close in the rear there, you can see that she used to park by nudge. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the back bumper was a little bit uh, damaged there, but that's the only part that's been replaced. Yeah. Everything else is totally original. And, um, yeah, it drives like brand new. You can mount a, a 50 cent coin on the engine when it's running yep. and not a shutter. It just does stays there. Oh. And I didn't glue it on either. No. no. Well, that was, that was my next line. Um, now, Chris, as graceful as it is, you did start telling us about the engine and the gaskets. So continue there. What have yeah. you What have you done up front? Yes. Well, I did the did the gaskets on the car. The car had started to leak a little bit because you know, 40, 50 years old gaskets they kind of leak. It's got thirty six thousand miles on it, original miles. But yeah, I changed the gaskets. Everyone was telling all these holding nuts are telling me don't change anything at all. Yeah, you know, otherwise I'd have a fire, so I replaced them. And, yeah, looking good now. That's the only difference. Uh, the back bumper was replaced. I replaced the brake cylinders uh, a few months ago, which were original as well. And uh, front brake shoes I replaced, little riveted ones that were on there still. Beautiful. Everything else is completely original. Beautiful two-tone colours too. I mean, uh, we look at the paint colours there from the time. Inside, the interior, still the uh, the natural grain there and the vinyl, the pattern on the seats, unchanged. Bench seat front, obviously uh, the rear following suit as well. Uh, parcel shelf up the back, that's original from the time as well. Um, yeah, you know, I've said 
uh, said this many times, you've just got to love them, haven't yeah, you? You've got to. I love them. I love them, the old Holdens. I'm a Ford guy too, so I'm, what the hell, you know, I've got a few Fords. but The appreciation broadens when you get around to these cars, and I think in this day and age, to be totally one-eyed, uh, you're only restricting yourself. I really, you know, to open up the doors and accept the other brands, appreciate the other shapes, it's, it's what it's all about. Australian cars, mate, and it's like we're all in the one game together. They're all closing because people are going Ford this, Holden that, Valiant this one, yeah. you know. Where it's Australian yeah. cars, the imports you've got to worry about. Look at Valiant, look at Chrysler. They were ahead of their time. They went broke first. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So did P76. <laughs> they were ahead of their time too. <laughs> look, the thing is, though, they're all fantastic cars with incredible accolades yeah. for their, the motoring history of this country. This car here certainly fits the realm, and thanks for sharing it with us, Chris. No problem, Flex. Flex, was nice to see you. Flex? Hmm, Flex. That's a name. Yeah. Yeah, must be those muscles, mate. Must be, mate. Flex, yeah. Thanks, Good mate. You, buddy. No worries. Thank you very much. With me now I have Howard, one of the organisers of this sensational event, the E.H. Holden Car Club of New South Wales, celebrating the 51st anniversary of the mighty E.H. Holden. How are you, Howard? I'm good, Fletch. Mate, uh, you've done well. It's a good turnout. It's brilliant. We've had 125 cars today. Yeah, beautiful sunny weather. Had to postpone for the rainy days in August, but turned it out today, yeah. Almost pretty well safe to say, just about every remaining E.H. Holden on the eastern seaboard could be pretty well here today, almost. <laughs> Well, if we could ever get that, we'd probably fill the park more, but no, we've had a lot here. Last year with the 50th um, special occasion, yeah, we probably got more again. I think we had over 200 then. There are a lot of E-Hs still around, and, and it's nice to know, isn't it? It is. Um, look, they're a classic. They've uh, great shape, roughly the same shape as a Commodore in its um, engineering specs, but it's got a lot more taste, yeah. nice lines. It's just nice to know that they're not dead and buried. I mean, a car that's been around since the early 60s and proving so popular now amongst enthusiasts. Absolutely, yeah. There wouldn't be too many cars out there that aren't in some stage of restoration or, you know, not many barn finds anymore. Yeah. People are still looking, but yeah. yeah, there's a lot of money being spent. It's getting harder and harder, but that's that's the challenge as well. Now, one good thing, one initiative that your club puts on today is the welcoming of other brands as well, which I think is a very nice touch. Yeah, Fletch, look, there's been um, a lot of support from the other clubs. This day wasn't just for EHs and EJs, even though that's how it started. We encourage those makes to come along. We've had some great support from the Ford and the uh, Tirana clubs over the years. Now, before we go, Howard, watch you get home. Want to be part of the club? It's the old question. How do we get in touch? Website, what is it? All right, well, we've got a website. Yeah, it's the H Holden Car Club of New South Wales org. There you go. Contact these guys. They're a great bunch of people. Thanks again, Howard. No worries at all. Thanks. Good on you, Fletch. Thank you. You know what? I would really like you to join me on a Fletch tour in 2015. Have a look at this. You deserve a Fletch Tour. See the amazing Ford, GM and Chrysler Nationals at Carlisle events along with museums and private collections in beautiful Pennsylvania, USA. Then it's the Motown city of Detroit and its region taking in more die-hard stuff with incredible history. Rounding off with the Woodward Dream Cruise, the largest moving car cruise in the world. One of the best things about a Fletch Tour is you're really looked after. It's something I've always wanted to do. Very well organised. Um, the tour company that put it together was great. Go to classicrestos.com.au and click on the Fletch Tours icon for more information. Hope you're enjoying today's show. Back with more after this. Well, here we are, our first ute for the show. How are you, Matt? Good, thanks. How are you, Fletch? Good, mate. Good. 64 EH, of course, celebrating the 51 years. What's your thoughts on that before we start talking about the Ute? What's your thoughts on the EH being here 51 years, Matt? I think it's great to see all the cars here done up, still lasting all that time. It's a celebration, isn't it? Yeah, it sure is. Uh, such a fine-looking shape of car. Now, you have done some astronomical work here on your Ute. Give us a quick rundown on what you've done here. Uh, repainted the whole thing, so panel beaded, spray painted, um, redone all inside the ute back, engine bay, um, yeah, rebuilt the motor, put a good diff in it, so it doesn't keep on breaking on me, um, yeah, all that sort of stuff, so. Okay, what's, uh, what's going on with the drive line? What are you running there? Just a six cylinder, but yeah, bought out to 192, yeah. big cam, and yeah, goes, gets up and goes all right. That was the go? That was the go back in the 60s. God, if you, if you had a 186 and you took it out or a 192, boy, look out. Yeah, that's it. Watch uh, out. Now, gearbox, what do you got there? Uh, M24 speed. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, it's not bad on the highway. Revs a bit, but yeah, it's okay. That's all right. Look, uh, it's a cool looking thing. 
Uh, I know you're watching at home thinking, yeah, I don't mind this, Fletch. It's not a bad-looking ute. I mean, I love it out the back there. I mean, the work you've done, the timber work there, Matt, that's beautiful. Yeah, it sets it off a bit, something a bit different, yeah. yeah. Don't put no tools in the back there, but... <laughs> yeah, or, the, or a tonne of gravel. Yeah, maybe not. Uh, now, Matt, what was your build time? It was off the road for about three years, but it was all up about two years working on it. Yeah, yeah done it all myself, so it takes a lot of time. Yeah. Got the motor built and the interior done, but yeah. apart from that, so... Yeah. You did, yeah, so 90% yourself. Yeah, pretty yeah. much, yeah. yeah. Good for you, that's great. That's what I love to hear, you know, a bloke having a go, you, you just can't beat that. Did you have the ute as we see it today, pictured in your mind as the finished product? Yeah, I always like this sort of look with the dragways and the old school sort of look I like, so yeah, I always had that picture in my head, yeah. 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 Good for you, mate. And one last question, uh, when you got the ute, how was the old girl? Was she in a bad way? Well, it was shooting flames out the carby. <laughs> So standard, wasn't it? Yeah, I think so. Wouldn't go into gear, so needed a fair <laughs> bit of work, yeah. Oh, that's good, mate. Look, it doesn't matter how it was when you got it. We look at it here today, and it really is beautiful. The silver, what is it? Just a metallic silver I picked off a chart. Yeah, it's not off of any car or anything. So. I, I nearly got that paint right then. If I just said metallic, I would have had it right. I see it very close. Yeah, <laughs> right, Matt, mate, beautiful truck. Thanks for bringing it today. Thanks a lot, Fletch. The Shannon's Club is interesting, and it will keep you occupied for hours. After logging in, there's just so much to see. There's the homepage, where you can keep up to date with the latest activities, make your comments and enjoy the replies. The Enthusiast page is where you can connect with others and send a message. The Vehicle section is incredible as well. Just click on your model of choice, from A through to Z, the cars will come up along with the owners to connect with. The business directory is your key to finding a business to help you. Everything from cleaning and detailing services, memorabilia and collectibles, info on Shannon's auctions, with tools and sheds just to name some. News and reviews keeps you informed with automotive happenings along with various vehicle reports, information and specifications. It doesn't matter where you are in Australia, the events directory is a very useful tool. The weekend is coming up. Want to find a car show? Check out the events section of the Shannon's Club. The videos section gives you access to your favourite motoring TV shows. Click on your desired program and watch the catch-up episodes to your heart's content from anywhere in the world. And the car club section is very cool. It is here where you can list your car club or search for someone else's car club. The forum section is vast. It's your place to buy, swap, sell and want for items. There's events, the list goes on. And of course, Shannon's are known for competitions and overseas trips. Keep an eye on this section for current travel prize winning opportunities. The Shannon's Club truly is your garage. Time for Ted Bullpit on today's show. Um, and the reason I've called him Ted Bullpit, we have found a 1964 EH Premier with every NASCAR accessory on. Oh, this is unbelievable. Welcome to today's show, Vince. Thank you, Flat. Thanks very much for having Tell us a story. Uh, I bought this 1964 EH Premier in 1996 off the original owner that bought it brand new in 1964 at um, JN Turner's and Son at Goulburn. And what's the go with every accessory? Um, was, was, were they there or have you added to it? No, no. originally the car had a, a lot of accessories on it from the dealer because of being black, it, yeah. was, it was done at the dealer. Yeah. And, but I've added the rest. Okay, now we look at the trim down the side, the red trim. Now that's called a flash kit. Now, educated as I go today because uh, I didn't know that. Now, what's the deal with the flash kit? Apparently that was installed by the dealer at the time. It was, to make them look flash. Wow. That's flash, isn't it? <laughs> hey, they put the red trim down the side. Oh, yeah, we'll sell these. There's going to be a rush on them. Yeah, yeah. Watch these go out the door with these trims on the side. Um, right down to the water bag rack on the front bar. I mean, every accessory. This is pretty uh, unique to look at this car. Scuff plates behind the door handles, uh, the electric fan. Uh, the list goes on and on. One that I think is amazing is the windscreen protector vents. Oh, yeah, it's very unusual, the windscreen protector. They were a pretty common, um, pretty common thing in 64s because they had um, zone toughened windscreens in them. Mm. When the zone toughened windscreen cracked, yes. you couldn't see where you're going. Yeah, it makes sense until the thing blows off. No, no, that's on with suction cups. It oh, doesn't no. blow off. No, no, trust me, it stays there. Well, that's good because <laughs> you wouldn't want it blowing off. No. On top of all this, we have a black car with a gorgeous red interior. There's always something about red and black. Interior-wise, when you found the car, Vince, 
How was the interior then? It's got the original door door panels on it now still, and the um, fronts had deteriorated. The back was like brand new, but the fronts had deteriorated, so I re-upholstered the whole the whole car in leather. Wow. In leather. Under the under the dash we have the shelf. There's a couple of items there. NASCO, what are they? Yeah, NASCO. Uh, one's so you can't pinch the car. Uh, they both are. They're both um, uh, locks so you can't take the car from the gear lever. Yep. And the other one goes onto the um, stop like pe uh, the stop pedal. Yep. So you can't so you can't put your foot in the brake. I don't know what's going on here, Vince, but it looks like there's a man with a trophy. Come on over, buddy. What's okay, Sorry to um, interrupt, but um, Vince, you've got top EJ of the day, mate. Oh. What, congratulations. It's, a, it's an EH. <laughs> Thanks very much. EJH. Yeah. They're all good. Fantastic. Good on you, Vince. No check worries. that out. Hey? Look at that. You can hold that trophy up with pride. Look at that. Fantastic. Thank, thank you very much. Well done. Hey? Wow. Well done, mate. All good. Now, Vince, it's not every day of the week that you turn up to the paddock and you get yourself a top 10 trophy. So rightly deserved. Oh, thanks very much. <laughs> very humble about it. It's been, uh, it's the first trophy I've ever won with the car. Yeah. I'm very, very happy. Thank you. Know you what, coming to car shows is not about winning trophies, but no. when you get one, it's just a nice bit of recognition, isn't it? It is. It is for all the hard work you put into it. And it's a lot of hard work. Yeah. Money doesn't mean anything, but the work does. Yeah, it's very nice. Very nice to receive something, you know, for particularly the uh, 50th year yes. for EH Holden. So yes. I'm very proud to win it on that. Good on you. Couldn't go to a nicer bloke. Thank you very much. Thanks, Lex. Thank you very much. Well, I hope you've enjoyed just some of the 2014 51st anniversary of the mighty E.H. Holden, put on by the E.H. Holden Club of New South Wales. What an event. In the meantime, classicrestos.com.au is the website that you need for the DVD boxed sets of the show. Classic Restos merchandise, they make great Christmas gifts as well. Contact information on a Fletch Tour in 2015 and of course our major sponsors as well. As I say at the end of every show, no matter where you're watching from, until next week, please ride and drive safe. I'm Fletch, and I thank you very much for watching. You can like and follow us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash classic restos TV and watch catch up episodes at shannons.com.au. Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannon's Insurance, where you can sign up for the Shannon's Club and Penrite Oil, offering technical assistance seven days a week.